Ants are common insects, but they have some unique capabilities, including their legendary communication skills that allow their colonies to function as superorganisms. There are 20 quadrillion ants on Earth. That's 2.5 million ants for every human. Known ant species, members of the family Formicidae, number over 12,000, and some experts estimate upwards of 20,000 exist. They can be found almost anywhere in the world, with the exception of Antarctica, Iceland, Greenland, and some island nations. Invasive ant species are becoming a problem, however, with research showing that over 500 species of ants were found in countries where they aren't native, having hopped a ride with humans or our cargo and goods. These alien ants can change the dynamics of an ecosystem, consume resources, and kill other organisms. This damage adds up. From 1930 to 2021, invasive ants caused an estimated $51 billion in economic losses. Ants evidently arose during the Cretaceous period at somewhat more than 100 million years ago. Their earliest known fossils fall into two groups. The first is the very primitive Mesozoic subfamily Sphecomermini. The second group consists of primitive members of the extant subfamily Formicini and the Poneromorph group of subfamilies, as recently divided, comprising the abundant and diverse Ponerini and five other less prominent subfamilies. Ants range in size from the minuscule up to one inch long, and usually appear black, brown, red, or yellow. Ants look much like termites, and the two are often confused. Ants can be identified by their elbowed antennae and narrow waist between the abdomen and thorax. Some ants have wings, which are longer in the front and shorter by their hind legs. The presence of wings indicates an ant's fertility. Ants with wings are either queens or the drones whose job it is to mate with them. The largest species of fossil ant is the aptly named Titanomerma giganteum. Queens of this species measured 6 centimeters long, with a wingspan of 15 centimeters. A stingless species, it was discovered in the Messel shales of Germany, and dates back 49.5 million years to the Eocene epoch. Ant mating is just as fascinating as to how ants reproduce. Males die within a few weeks after they mate with young queens. Mating takes place during nuptial flights that take place from late spring through early summer when conditions are right, humid weather. During these flights, Virgin queens fly high up in the air until males swarm all around them causing a cloud of insects. They pair off, mate midair, and fall back down to earth where each female goes her separate way to start new colonies. During the mating season, winged male and female ants will leave their nests to engage in swarming. This is how they mate before dying. So only some of these flying ants are destined for new homes where they can start a family. Queen ants fly up into trees or tall grasses while attached to a male who has mounted them from behind. They lock together until the male dies, which often results in both being pulled off by gravity as they hit the ground below, without breaking away. A queen ant must find a male of her species before mating. As soon as she leaves the colony from which she was born, she will start looking for males to reproduce to keep life going on. The first thing you need to know about how ants mate is that it happens during a short period every year called nuptial flight, or swarming season. During this time, all eggs laid by queens are taken care of by the queen herself until they mature into adults. In other words, if these eggs don't hatch, their entire colony will die off as well as their lineage ends forever. Ants typically reproduce asexually. The queen ant does not mate with the male ants. Rather, she produces all of her offspring by parthenogenesis or mitosis. Parthenogenesis is how an unfertilized egg develops into an embryo that will grow to be another female ant through duplication of the chromosomes in its nucleus without meiosis taking place. Reproduction begins when a male ant meets with a female ant that's able to reproduce. Most females are unfertile. These are the workers. The male will then proceed to mate with her leaving behind an aphorism gland that secretes chemicals that suppress other males' sexual behaviors towards the queen. Parthenogenesis is quite fascinating and has been observed in various species. Mycosepurus smithii, commonly known as Smith's fungus-growing ant, is one of the few known ant species where parthenogenesis occurs. In Mycosepurus smithii, queens reproduce via parthenogenesis, meaning they produce offspring that are genetic clones of themselves without the need for males. This is unusual in ants, as most species rely on sexual reproduction. 
The parthenogenetic reproduction in Smithii is significant as it allows for rapid population growth and colonization of new areas. However, it also reduces genetic diversity, which can make the species more susceptible to diseases and environmental changes. Smithii ants are known for their unique behavior of farming fungus, which they use as their primary food source. They cultivate fungus gardens, feeding the fungus with plant material and maintaining the right conditions for its growth. Because they reproduce asexually, colonies of Smithii are composed entirely of female ants. The lack of males in the population is a direct result of their reproductive strategy. The study of parthenogenesis in Smithii provides valuable insights into the evolution of reproductive strategies and the ecological impacts of asexual reproduction in social insects. The social structure of ants is highly organized, with specific roles and responsibilities designated to different individuals within the colony. Ants live in colonies consisting of a queen, workers, and soldiers. The queen's main responsibility is reproduction while workers are responsible for tasks such as foraging, nest maintenance, and caring for the young. Soldiers, on the other hand, defend the colony from potential threats. This hierarchical structure ensures the smooth functioning and survival of the ant colony. The queen plays a central role in the social structure of an ant colony. She is responsible for reproduction and ensuring the survival of the colony. As the largest ant, she can live for many years and produce thousands of eggs. Her primary function is to lay eggs and establish new colonies. The queen maintains order and hierarchy within the colony by releasing pheromones that facilitate chemical communication. This communication helps coordinate activities and maintain social harmony. The queen's dominance over other members of the colony highlights her importance. In some species, there may be multiple queens coexisting in a single colony, with each one playing a vital role. Workers play a crucial role in maintaining the functioning and survival of an ant colony. They are solely responsible for various tasks such as foraging for food, nest building, brood care, and defense. Workers are usually sterile females, although in some species, males can also take on worker roles. Tasks are often divided among workers based on their age and size. They communicate and coordinate their activities through pheromones, touch, antennal movement, and sound. Workers work tirelessly and selflessly for the good of the entire colony. Soldiers play a crucial role in the social structure of ant colonies. They are responsible for defending the colony from predators and other threats. These specialized ants have larger heads and stronger mandibles compared to other castes. They are equipped with venomous stings or acidic sprays, which they use for protection. Soldiers are usually larger in size and are in charge of patrolling the colony's boundaries. Their presence ensures the safety and security of the entire ant colony. The number and size of soldiers may vary depending on the species and the level of threat faced by the colony. Drones are male ants in an ant colony and have a specific role in the social structure of ants. Drones are responsible for mating with the queen. They do not contribute to the work or labor within the colony like workers and soldiers. Drones have wings, which allow them to fly and find other queen ants for mating. They are typically larger in size compared to workers, but smaller than the queen. Once mating is complete, drones usually die shortly afterwards. Ants don't have ears. Instead, they pick up on vibrations in their environment to know when danger is approaching. Some ants also don't have eyes. They communicate and move around by using their antennae, much as a blind person would use a cane. Ants exhibit behaviors that suggest they have a sense of time, though not in the same way humans do. Ants have circadian rhythms, which are roughly 24-hour cycles in their physiological processes. These rhythms help regulate their daily activities such as foraging, nest maintenance, and brood care. These cycles are influenced by environmental cues like light and temperature. Many ant species perform certain tasks at specific times of the day. For example, some species forage primarily during the day, while others may forage at night to avoid predators and heat. Ants are known for their impressive navigational skills. Desert ants, for example, use a form of path integration, keeping track of distance and direction traveled to return to their nest. This ability suggests they have an internal mechanism for measuring time and distance. Studies have shown that ants can learn and remember time intervals associated with specific tasks. For instance, they can be trained to expect food at certain times, 
indicating they can perceive and react to the passage of time. In social insect colonies, coordination of activities among thousands of individuals requires some sense of timing. Ants communicate and synchronize their actions through chemical signals, pheromones, and possibly other means, helping to ensure the colony functions efficiently. Alarm pheromones in ants play a crucial role in their communication system, particularly in signaling danger and coordinating defensive behaviors. Alarm pheromones are produced by specialized glands in ants. When an ant detects a threat or is attacked, it releases these chemicals into the air, alerting other members of the colony. Alarm pheromones often work in conjunction with other pheromones and signals. For example, trail pheromones might guide ants to and from a food source, while alarm pheromones ensure the colony can defend itself when needed. Ants are fascinating creatures, and their ability to engage in agriculture is one of the most intriguing aspects of their behavior. The most well-known example of ant agriculture is fungus farming, which is practiced by several ant species, particularly in the Generaata and Acromyrmex, leafcutter ants, and Mycosepurus. Leafcutter ants cut leaves and other plant material, which they carry back to their nests. The plant material is used to cultivate a specific type of fungus, the Luco agaricus gongulophorus. The ants meticulously tend to their fungal gardens, providing them with substrate, removing contaminants, and ensuring optimal growing conditions. This relationship is mutualistic, as the fungus benefits from the substrate and care provided by the ants, while the ants rely on the fungus as their primary food source. Some ant species, such as those in the genus Mycosepurus, practice simpler forms of fungus farming. They collect organic matter such as leaf litter and decomposing wood to cultivate their fungal crops. Another form of ant agriculture involves farming aphids and other hemipteran insects. Ants protect and care for these insects, which produce honeydew, a sugary substance that ants consume. Ants protect aphids from predators and sometimes move them to better feeding sites. In return, the aphids provide a steady supply of honeydew. Similar to aphid farming, some ants farm scale insects for the honeydew they produce. The ants protect and tend to the scale insects, ensuring their survival and productivity. Ant agriculture has significant ecological impacts, influencing plant growth, soil composition, and the populations of other organisms in their ecosystems. Ants exhibit behaviors akin to animal husbandry, particularly through their interactions with other insects such as aphids and scale insects. Aphids excrete a sugary substance called honeydew, which is a valuable food source for ants. Ants protect aphids from predators, such as ladybugs and parasitoid wasps. This protection ensures a continuous supply of honeydew. Ants can move aphids to more productive feeding sites, such as new plant growth, ensuring the aphids have ample resources to continue producing honeydew. Ants often milk aphids by stroking them with their antennae to stimulate the release of honeydew. Ants also tend to scale insects, which, like aphids, produce honeydew. Ants protect scale insects from predators and parasites, and can also relocate them to more favorable feeding sites. The honeydew provided by these insects is a rich carbohydrate source, essential for the energy needs of the colony. By tending to these insects, ants ensure a stable and reliable food source, which is particularly important during times when other food sources may be scarce. These mutualistic relationships have driven coevolution between ants and the insects they tend. This has led to adaptations in both ants and their livestock to optimize their interactions. Ants' husbandry practices can influence plant health and distribution, as well as the population dynamics of other organisms within their ecosystem. The ant death circle, also known as an ant mill or circular mill, is a fascinating and somewhat macabre phenomenon that occurs when a group of army ants loses their pheromone trail and begins to follow one another in a continuous, closed loop. Army ants rely heavily on pheromone trails to navigate and coordinate their movements. These trails are laid down by other ants and followed to food sources or back to the nest. If the pheromone trail is disrupted or lost, ants can begin to follow each other in a loop, mistakenly reinforcing the trail as they move in circles. The ant mill is a result of a positive feedback loop where each ant follows the ant in front of it, perpetuating the circular movement. This phenomenon is a failure of coordination among the ants, showing the limitations of their reliance on chemical signals. If the ants cannot find a way to break the loop, 
they may continue to circle until they die from exhaustion. In some cases, external factors such as changes in the environment or the introduction of new pheromone trails can disrupt the loop and save the ants. Ant mills are relatively rare in nature but have been observed in several species of army ants, including those in the genus Labidus and Eseton. The size of an ant mill can vary, with some documented cases forming circles several meters in diameter. The concept of zombie ants typically refers to ants that have been infected and controlled by a parasitic fungus, most commonly from the genus Ophiocordyceps. This species of fungus specifically targets ants, particularly carpenter ants. It is found in tropical forests around the world. The fungus releases spores that attach to an ant and penetrate its exoskeleton. The fungal cells then spread throughout the ant's body, releasing chemicals that affect its behavior. The infected ant's behavior is manipulated by the fungus. The ant leaves its colony and climbs vegetation, often positioning itself in a location optimal for the fungus's growth and spore dispersal. The ant bites down on a leaf or twig in a death grip, securing itself in place. This typically occurs in areas with high humidity and temperature, ideal conditions for fungal growth. Once the ant is secured, the fungus kills the host and continues to grow, eventually producing a stalk-like structure that emerges from the ant's head. This structure releases spores to infect other ants. The released spores fall to the ground and infect other ants, continuing the cycle. The fungus plays a role in controlling ant populations, which can have cascading effects on the ecosystem. By reducing the number of ants, the fungus can indirectly influence the populations of other organisms and the dynamics of the ecosystem. The presence of Ophiocordyceps fungi can contribute to maintaining biodiversity by preventing any single ant species from becoming too dominant. Future ants may evolve to become even more efficient in their roles within ecosystems, enhancing their abilities to communicate, forage, and protect their colonies. We might see the emergence of new species adapted to urban environments, coexisting closely with humans. Alternatively, some ant species could develop heightened resistance to pollutants and climate extremes, securing their survival in increasingly hostile habitats.